Okay, let's uh, talk about confidence intervals for qualitative data. What you're going to want open is the CI underscore P for proportion Word document. I'm going to go through some of this lecture outline that's going to particularly pertain to you this week on the quiz as well as the first exam. And then you need a mini tab file open. I have the one open uh, from the ZNT lecture. It does not have to be that one. Uh, it can just be a blank mini tab file uh, is certainly fine. But let's talk about proportion confidence intervals. All right, so the key to proportion confidence intervals is that we have qualitative data. And this data has been dichotomized in such a way that it is binary. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, there's a trait of interest. For example, I may survey everybody at the George on the color of their car. And I'm only interested in the people that have a red car. So you either say red or you say another color. So red is what I'm measuring, and then everything else goes into the other bucket. All right, um, I'm not interested in all the other colors. It's just I'm only interested in red, and red is viewed as a success, and everything else is viewed as a failure. These confidence intervals are constructed somewhat similarly to the Z and T based confidence intervals in that we start with a point estimate. We go get a sample, and we measure the trait of interest on that sample. And we start with a point estimate, which is the sample proportion of successes. Okay, for example, let's go down here to see for this example. In a survey of 1,006 U.S. adults, 181 said that Abraham Lincoln was the greatest president. Find a point estimate for the population proportion of U.S. adults who say Abraham Lincoln was the greatest. All right, so we are only interested in the people who say Abraham Lincoln. We don't care about anybody else said. All right, so our point estimate, which is the sample proportion um, who say Lincoln, all right, would be equal to 181 divided by 1,006. So the people who say Lincoln divided by... The total in the sample and we can pull this up quickly in Excel or you can use your calculator and we take 181 divide it by 1006 and we get roughly 18 percent as our point estimate okay so in other words in our sample 18 percent of the people said Lincoln and 82 percent of the people said somebody else all right. Uh, one thing to note, all right, in this margin of error formula that's going to rear its head here in a few minutes when we turn to mini tab, is that we have a critical Z score. In other words, we are constructing proportion confidence intervals based on the normal distribution. Okay. So I'm going to say it one more time. These proportion confidence intervals are based on the normal distribution. That means there's going to be some box you have to check in Minitab when we get over there. All right. Uh, let's go ahead then and move over to Minitab and work on constructing this confidence interval. All right. So using the Abraham Lincoln data, construct a 90% confidence interval for the population proportion of U.S. adults who say that Abraham Lincoln was the greatest president. All right, so we are going to go under one sample because we only have one sample, and hopefully your intuition takes you down to proportion. We do not have raw data, we have summarized data. All right, and then we come to number of events and number of trials. Events are the people who are the successes. How many people said Lincoln? And trials is the number of people in the sample. So what we want to type is 181 and 1,006. Now, let's say that for some reason you confuse this, all right? And you put in your sample size there and then your number of people who say Lincoln there Minitab's not going to let you make that mistake, all right? They're going to tell you, hey, your trials has to be a bigger number. So if you get this error, just know, oops, you flipped these numbers. 
So we're going to put 181 in as our events and 1,006 as our number of trials. We need to go under options and as always specify our confidence and for this problem we want 90% confidence. And the last thing you have to do, folks, is you have to change the method to normal approximation. All right, say it one more time. You have to change the method to normal approximation. That's the method that I'm teaching. All right, we are not using the exact or binomial distribution. All right, so we've got uh, everything set here. We can say OK. All right, and we get our output, our sample size the number of people who say Lincoln, our point estimate here, the 18% that we already calculated, and then our confidence interval around that 18%. All right, so we want to interpret this confidence interval. I'm just going to go down here and say with 90% confidence, you can say that the population proportion of U.S. adults who say that Lincoln is the greatest president is between now. Here we go. These are meant to be interpreted as percents, all right? In the same way, you don't say you have 0.25 in your pocket, all right? We don't say 0.16 of the population. We're going to say 16% and 19.98%, all right? So this would be our interpretive complete sentence for this problem on Lincoln. Let's do another one. In a survey of 498 U.S. adults, 71% say that teenagers are more dangerous drivers than people over 65. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the population proportion of U.S. adults who think that teenagers are the more dangerous drivers. All right, this one's a little bit tricky because we want to go into one sample proportion all right, and let, let's back up for a second. How do we know this is proportion? How do we know we're not going to go to Z or T? Well, there's quite a few ways to know. Uh, one is we are reading that we want a confidence interval for the population proportion. We're reading proportion, right? We read that word. We do not read the word mean. We are not given any information about a standard deviation, okay? So here, we are going to go to one sample proportion. All right, we have summarized data. All right, what's our number of events and what's our number of trials? And the answer is, we don't know yet. We know in our survey, there's 498 adults. So we know the number of trials is 498. We do not know the number of events because all I tell you is that 71% say teenagers. All right, so let's go down here. Wow, I don't know why this keeps happening to me. 71% is the point estimate. All right, so, but we want number of events. So how are we going to get them? All right, we need to take 0.71 times the number in the sample. All right, so 0.71 times 498. Go over to Excel. 0.71 times 498. And we get 353.58. Okay, so we're bebopping along. And we come over here to 353.58. And we think we got it. Uh-oh. Minitab says that's not a number of events. And events are integers. All right, so we can't type in 353.58. So what are we going to do? We are going to do what we always do, which is round up. Okay, so we are going to round this up to 354. We're going to go under options, change our confidence to 99%, change our method to normal approximation and say OK. All right, so now we can interpret this sentence. We've got with 99% confidence, we can say the proportion of all drivers who say teens are more dangerous is between 
oops, it's important to spell words right, is between, let's see, what do we have here? We have 65.85% and 76.32%. All right, and so that would be our interpretive sentence for constructing that confidence interval. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to proportion. Key takeaways here are that it is qualitative data. You either have the trait or you don't. Uh, you go to one sample proportion, and you change your method to normal approximation. All right, guys, that's, those are the key takeaways. Go ahead and practice some of the proportion problems and get ready for them on the quiz. If you have any questions, just reach out to me.